Martin Knopf Monroe Street in historic Jackson Ward, where the pastor is the Reverend Eric D. Graham Sr. My name is Janet Blackman. I am the dean. Let us pray. Most holy and graceful Father, we come this morning thanking you, Father, for this day. Father, thanking you for loving us, for guiding us, keeping us, Father God, through all the things that are happening. Father God, I invite the Holy Spirit to come into this place, Father, to stir us up. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We will now have a selection.
take much to the sun in the race. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'd like to call out some of the names that we are praying for in church. Sister Lauren Shelton. Such a sweet aroma. Florian Polly. Barbara Red. Barbara Boa. That's some of them. Father God, I don't know all the names, but you do. Let us pray. Most precious and holy Father, here I stand in the gap. Father, ask me to bless us. But first, foremost, Father, I'm standing here to thank you. Praise you, Father God, because when we praise you, Father God, that is what you want. And when praises go up, blessings come down. And Father God, if it be your will, Father God, I ask that you bless each and every person, each and every name that I called out. Father God, the names that I didn't call out. Father, just touch them. Let them know that you are right there with them, Father God. And there's nothing, nothing on this earth that you don't know about, Father God. All we have to do is just hold on, Father. Hold on to your hand. Father God, because you said that there's nothing, nothing, Lord, that you hold from your children, Father God. If we will only turn, turn from our ways, Father God, and call on your name. Father God, and hear us stand calling, asking, Father God, that you touch each and every one in their situation. Father God, stir up the atmosphere. I don't know what they need, but you do. Father God, and when you touch, when you touch us, Father God, there's nothing like it. Father God, and I ask. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, and I count it all done. Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. The song said, I am so satisfied. It didn't just say so, but it ran that so out of there. Amen. I am so satisfied, hallelujah, uh, with my Savior because he means more to me. That's what the songwriter said. He means more to me than anything in this world. I am so glad and honored to be with you this morning in the absence of your pastor, the <laughs> Reverend Eric Brown and First Lady Cora Brown. I, I, I'm just elated to be here amongst the people. Glory to God. I thank him for the opportunity. I thank God for the opportunity. But there is a word, amen. I won't be before you long, but there is a word. Hallelujah. And if you would, please turn with me to the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Amen. The fifth chapter of Ephesians. It's in the far back of your Bible. Amen. It comes after the Gospels. It comes after the uh, Acts. It comes after Romans, it comes after Corinthians, and then you're coming close, we're at Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Amen, and let us pray. Father God, I'm so satisfied, hallelujah, with my Savior. I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you, God, for another opportunity to come forth and deliver the word to your people. God, I pray right now that you will come forth. I need thee. Every hour I need thee, that you would come forth right now. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way right now so that those who might hear this word might be delivered, might be saved, and might be set free. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ephesians the fifth chapter, and we're going to start at the eighth verse, and we're going to begin reading. And mine is the um, NIV version. Amen. It says, for you were once, I mean the King James Version, I'm sorry, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of of the light consist in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. And this is why it is said, and this is my focus verse, this is what we will concentrate on today. Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Amen. I want to read that last verse from the complete Jewish Bible, and this is how it, it, it reads. It read, get up, sleeper, arise from the dead, and the Messiah will shine on you. Amen? Amen. I found in my studies that this 14th uh, verse is part of a Christian hymn about the promise of salvation. The introduction is found earlier in the book of Ephesians in the fourth chapter in the eighth verse. And there it says, therefore, this is said. When he ascended on high, he made captivity itself captive. Oh, I'm so glad this morning, saints, that I serve a God that can make captivity captive. I'm so glad this morning, saints, 
that I serve a God that can make the oppressor oppressed. Amen. Glory to God. It said, therefore, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself captive. And he gave gifts to his people. And then I found another part of the song. I was so intrigued. And similar words were found in Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the first and the second verse. And it reads like this. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. For behold, darkness covers the earth. Oh, I heard wish somebody would hear me right there. Because darkness has covered the earth. Amen. When they talked to the biblical people some 2,000 years ago, it was talking about darkness. And I'm talking about darkness of today. And I'm still in Isaiah. And it goes on to say, and the thick darkness is over the people. The thick darkness, my brothers and sisters, was over the people in 2020. And that same darkness has creeped up into 2021. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear over you. I stopped by today to talk about that light, your light. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so if I had to put a topic on this sermon today, it would be shine your light. Hallelujah. And then I want to give you a challenge that I heard a couple of weeks ago. The challenge is, are you brave enough to be the light? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I witnessed that light. I witnessed that light shining brightly when Amanda Goldman made history at the age of 22 as the youngest poet in U.S. history to read her work at the presidential inauguration. I know y'all saw her quoting the interview she had with Complex Magazine, the Los Angeles-born poet laureate read her five-minute poem entitled The Hill We Climb, which she said she struggled to finish but she finished it after the insurrection at the Capitol on January the 6th. Hallelujah. But when I heard her poem, amen, when I heard her speak about the light, I saw the light shine bright upon her. I saw the light coming from her. I felt the light. When she started her poem, she started with, when day comes, we ask ourselves. Where can we find light in this never-ending shade? This never-ending shade that we find ourselves in, saints of God, is darkness. Matthew 4, 16 speaks to this darkness. The people living in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of the death. A light has dawned. A light has dawned. It dawned on January the 6th when that young woman stood before the nation and spoke about where we should be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She also said that we witness a nation that is not broken, but simply unfinished. Hallelujah. Unfinished, y'all, means that there is still time for change. Unfinished, y'all, means there is still time to get it right. Unfinished, y'all, means there is still time to turn your light on. Unfinished, y'all, means there is still time to let your light shine brighter than it's ever shined before. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are free. I want to challenge you today to let your light shine. Let it shine in you, through you, in your home, in your car. a day. See, she went on to say, 
while we have our eyes on the future, that the future has their eyes on us. That's a statement right there. We, what we're doing today, will make history so that the generations that's coming behind us will look to us to see what we did. They will look to us to see if we showed our light. They will look to us to see how bright we were in the middle of darkness, how bright our light shined in the crisis. My brothers and my sisters, that light has been given to you. So you must therefore walk in that light. Amen. Ephesians 8 tells us that you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. Isn't that what it's saying? Hallelujah. Jesus tells us in John. I love John. It's my favorite book. In the 8th chapter, the 12th verse, he said that he is. <laughs> Jesus said that he is the light of the world. And whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, but will have that light. Amen. He didn't just give it to Amanda. He didn't just give it to Wanda. He didn't just give it to, to Pastor Eric. He didn't just give it to Deacon Janet. He gave it to us all. Amen. That light is in all of us. Glory to God. And I'm so glad that we too have that light. And so therefore, we too should act like children of the light. So in this passage, y'all, getting back to the passage, in this passage, Paul is praising the reader for their solid Christian reputation. He's praising them for their light, reminding them that Jesus is the source of their salvation, is the source of their light, and is the heart of the Christianity good news. Amen. So uh, it's time for you to, to turn on your light. But I believe that a lot of folk in the world today, their lights have grown dim. I believe a lot of folk today are struggling to let their light shine because the darkness is so thick and it's so deep. Hallelujah. I feel like a lot of folk are walking around in a fog. Hallelujah. They even given a, a residue condition of COVID called brain fog where people are tired and sluggish and, and they can't make it through the day. I believe that's what's going on with us spiritually. We've been in quarantine and confined and in this pandemic and we have become spiritually sluggish. Our light is dim. Our light is not shining. And I want to encourage somebody to turn your light on, to shine your light, even in the midst of the darkness, even in the midst of the fog. Amen. That's what I feel like everybody's in a fog. You know, like when we have our cars, amen, your car have a thing, a light on it called a fog light. But see, when we turn on our lights or turn on our cars, our regular lights come on automatically. Amen. On oh, my car, I got it set on automatically. So in the daytime, my light shine. In the nighttime, my light shine. In the rain, my light shine. In the snow, my light shine. But when the visibility gets low, and when it's hard to see where you're going, when the navigation gets hard, I have to turn on my fog lights. And when I turn on my fog lights, they get down up under the fog and let me see the ground. Not only do they let me see the ground, they let me see on the side of me. See, we need to turn on our spiritual lights so we can lift up this darkness. Oh, hallelujah, want to slow down. See, what dissipates the fog, y'all, is the sun. Amen. When the light comes, it dissipates the fog. See, when you let your light shine, you can come up out of that fogginess. You can come up out of that place. So that's why God led me to this 14th verse, y'all. Because in this 14th verse, glory to God, he gave us what we need to do. Hallelujah. In this 14th verse, he says, awake, arise. I don't know what you're doing. In order for you to get your light to shine, to turn on the light so you can have visibility, you have to awake. You have to collect your faculties, hallelujah. You have to rouse from a sleeping and sitting position, amen. You have to come from doing nothing, from doing non-existence, because light will penetrate, hallelujah. Light will do what it's set out to do, glory to God. And so he said, awake. And then what 
I'm getting ahead of myself. It says awake. Hallelujah. Isn't it what it says? Awake up, you sleepers. Get up, you sleepers. Even though we are confined and in the pandemic, we need to get up. Amen. I'm not telling you to go outside, but you can. You spend time texting. You spend time liking on social media. Then you can spend time letting your light shine. You can spend time reaching out to folk. You can spend time telling folk about salvation. Hallelujah. Awake. Awake your spirit. Wake it. Wake your spirit up. Amen. And then once it's woke, what the next thing is saying? It's the rise from a dead. Arise from the dead. Hallelujah. It means to get up, to stand up. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6 tells us in the 6th chapter when we put on the whole armor, it says when you have done everything that you think that you can do to stand, it tells you to continue to stand. Isn't that what it says? Glory to God. I think I got somebody in here agreeing with me. So you got to rise up from a dead state. Amen. Holly, you want to know how you do that? You do that by having a relationship with Jesus. You do that by listening to his voice. <laughs> See, even Lazarus was dead. Amen. But when Jesus called out his name, hallelujah, even in his dead state, uh, he heard the light uh, and he rose up. Uh, he stood up. Uh, he came out of the tomb. Uh, even in his dead clothes, uh, his spirit said, Spirit said, rise. <laughs> oh, I'm speaking to my own self, y'all. <laughs> Glory to God. Said, rise up. Rise up from your prayers and act. Rise up from your bed and of sleeping and do more. Rise up from a dead situation. Rise up from a dead mindset. Why? Because we serve an already done God. Because he's already completed it. Rise up from the dead stuff. Rise up out of sin. Rise up and put on the new man. And don't let the past hold you back. Don't let what's going on around you today to block you from pressing on, from shining your light. See, Christ, hallelujah, said if you do this, Christ will shine on you. Hallelujah. If you do this, then Christ will connect with your light. And then your light will turn from regular bug light to one of those LED lights. One of those lights that can penetrate further. But I'm talking about getting some light. But somebody said, Wanda, I heard what you said. That was really good. But, you know, <coughs> I, don't, I don't still don't understand how to turn my light on. And I'm going to give you a little example. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm, I'm about to finish. Glory to God. For those of you who might have, need just a little boost of light, I want you to go into your prayer cause and amen. And I want you to pretend, amen, that you get to step foot in heaven, uh, even if it's just for five minutes. Uh, because I heard uh, that when Christ went to heaven, glory, that there was no light, uh, there was no sun, uh, glory to God, that the light was Jesus, uh, that he was the light. Uh, and I believe uh, that if you was to go there for five minutes, uh, that you would soak up enough light uh, that when you return to earth, uh, that you would be like Moses. Uh, your whole continent will change. Uh, you might have a streak in your hair. You might lose some weight. Uh, but I guarantee you, uh, a change will come over you. When you let your light shine, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Hallelujah before men, so that they may see your good works. Not so that you may boast, but just so that God might get the glory. Aranda Gorman, she stood before God and men at 22 years old. And she gave us the challenge. She said, are you brave enough to see the light? Amen. Because if you go back to Noah's, insurrection was nothing new. 
on the day of Korah in Numbers 16, I believe, or number 6, 6 or 16, in the day of Korah, 250 men rose up against Moses. It was an insurrection that day. They said they told Moses, you act like you the only one that God loves. He loves us all. Amen. And it said, go read it. It said God opened up the earth and swallowed them up. Not just them, but their families, their children, their home generations were swallowed up. God is in control. And he can do the same thing today. But he's given us an opportunity this day while we're in the land of the living to shine our light into the darkness of this world. Awake, arise from the dead, and God will shine on you. Amen. I want to have that relationship. I want my light to shine. I know that I've been shining my light, but I need to learn how to turn on my fog lights. I need for someone just to, to help me. Hallelujah. I need to know that when it's over on this side, that I will get it happen. I will walk the streets of gold. I will see that. Just like the moon absorbs the sun and shines the light at night, that's what God wants for you. And if you at this very moment, hallelujah, want that light, just pray with me. Pray with me right now. Surrender your heart right now. And say, Father, I surrender myself to you right now. I know that I am a sinner and that I cannot save myself. But I know that there is someone who can save me, and that is Jesus. And so I invite you in my heart right now. Even though I'm not all that, I know that I can be. I know that if you come in my heart right now, that my light will shine brighter. And that I will be all that you created me to be. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the opportunity to come before you guys this morning. I pray that all is well with everyone in their homes today. Go back to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and read it. Amen. And be in